Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Connected Data's live webinar on the transporter add Dropbox like mobile access to your NetApp filers. My name is Sabina Sibidar, and I'm the Channel Marketing Manager at Connected Data. Our presenter today will be Russell Johnson. He's our CEO, and he'll be going over the presentation. Once he goes over the presentation, we'll be doing a live Q&A session. So if you have any questions, please go ahead and type them on your sidebar, and we'll try to answer as many as possible. And of course, at the end of the webinar, we're going to have our 10 lucky winners who will be winning our Amazon gift cards, so stay tuned. All right, Russ, here you go. Thanks, Samina. Hi, everybody, and welcome to our webinar. Thank you for taking some time out of your day to learn more about connected data and the transporter. We are the secure and private alternative to Dropbox using your existing infrastructure. This slide shows a listing of headlines clipped out in newspapers over the last 12 or 18 months. I'm sure you'll be familiar with a lot of these. Essentially, what this slide is showing that is that the public cloud storage services aren't quite as secure as we once thought. Certainly they're easy to use and they bring a lot of flexibility to the marketplace, but companies are being more and more concerned about what, what data gets stored up into these public cloud storage services. They don't want their confidential information out there. In fact, this study by Osterman Research shows that in companies of over 1,000 employees, greater than 43% of those employees are using public cloud storage services such as Dropbox against their IT wishes or even against their, uh, their rules. So IT has asked not to use these services and people are anyway. And why this is happening is uh, the traditional method of uh, accessing folders or files is to use the VPN to get access to your shared drive, access the files and folders that you need off of the traditional NAS device behind the firewall. It's kind of cumbersome, plugging in with the VPN, using it. Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work, sometimes the internet connection causes the VPN to not work right. You've got a big listing of files that somebody else has organized, it's hard to find things. So once you find the folder or the file that you're looking for, a lot of users say, well, you know, I'm going to need this again, so I'm just going to save it up to Dropbox, because I know I can get it on my mobile device, Starbucks, and I know that I can get access to it easily. But once it's up, into the cloud up on a service like Dropbox. You don't know what happens from there. IT departments don't know if it's being shared out beyond the organization uh, with someone else or if somebody else that's managing the folders or files is, is able to see it. You don't know where it goes from there. Uh, and employees aren't trying to do anything wrong. They're just trying to get their work done in an easier way. So what are businesses doing? The donut on the bottom left is a graph that shows that 80% of companies have an active policy to block public cloud storage services such as Dropbox. So companies are actively saying, don't use these services, we don't want our confidential information up on the public cloud, and we're blocking these services. In fact, the companies that have already embraced the business version or the enterprise version of Box or Dropbox or the like, uh, have indicated that they are extremely interested in bringing it uh, back in-house. So this study was done by Enterprise Strategy Group, uh, and they surveyed companies that have already embraced or signed up with the business version of Box or Dropbox, and 97% of them say that they're interested in bringing it back in-house. And the reasons they want to do that primarily are they want flexibility and control over, the, over where the data is stored. They want to know exactly the location of the data. It's in their IT room, it's in their data center, and they can walk up and see exactly the device that's being held on. And they want to know exactly who has been sharing that data and with whom, who has access to it, with no third party involved. They also want the ability to leverage existing on-premise infrastructure and investments. So they have already got land connections, rack, space, power, cooling, internet connections. They want to be able to leverage that existing investment uh, in order to provide the, uh, the cloud-like experience to their users. So that brings us to the transporter. The transporter is an all-inclusive integrated appliance that includes the software that you need to, prov to provide mobile access or mobile device access to your files, enterprise file sync and share, as well as global replication as transporters conduct an automated persistent synchronization between transporter devices uh, no matter where they're located. The transporter also uh, provides the ability to extend the existing NAS server, uh, file servers, 
uh, and shared folders uh, from your existing infrastructure out onto uh, the transporter for external access and file sync and share. It's very non-disruptive. It integrates with your current systems or processes. It's much higher capacity than the cloud services and dramatically less expensive than cloud storage. And for anybody that's had to pay these uh, renewal fees uh, per user uh, per month, you know that the cloud services can get very expensive. And the transporter is 100% private. So here's the way a typical installation uh, would be set up. You've got the transporters in the middle of the screen there, uh, indicated by the blue uh, 2U rack mount servers. And the green arrow to the right of the transporter is our network storage connector, which creates a bidirectional bi synchronization with the chosen folders on your traditional NAS device, indicated uh, uh, just to the right of that green arrow by uh, the uh, NetApp uh, item, the NetApp servers there. So what that does is it, it, uh, you, you point the network storage connector to the desired folders on the NAS device, and it does an active, uh, persistent, uh, bidirectional synchronization. So any changes that are done on the LAN through the traditional shared drive uh, also get synchronized over to the transporter, and the transporter makes those files now available outside the firewall via AES 256-bit encryption uh, onto mobile devices or remote users, and if they make changes to those files, those changes come all the way back through to the traditional NAS device. This gives you the ability to provide mobile, mobile access or mobile device access to your data, as well as enterprise files you can share, while at the same time keeping all of your regular processes intact, as you can see by the uh, blue arrow uh, moving up into the right, uh, where there's a uh, the backup routine, uh, the traditional um, virus protection, all the routines, all the audited routines that you have uh, still all remain intact and in place. This would be a typical deployment uh, for uh, a business that has a, a few different locations. You see the transporters again uh, in the middle right of the screen at the corporate HQ, a couple of transporters there based on capacity or user account requirements, the uh, blue uh, arrows in a circle there uh, between the NAS devices uh, indicates the bidirectional synchronization of our network storage connector. Uh, so um, the transporters are serving up the files in a file sync and share environment uh, around the globe, if you will, in the, in, in the middle of the screen there. And I like to draw your attention to the branch office on the bottom left, where uh, there may be a hundred employees and uh, it might, you might want a very light IT footprint, but be able to provide local access to folders and files for those employees at that location. The transporter does this very nicely, very seamlessly uh, by uh, installing the transporter at that location. All the employees get land rate access to the folders and files that they need to work on, and then they synchronize, the transporter synchronizes, as I said before, in an automated, persistent manner to, this, to the transporters at the corporate HQ. Uh, and that occurs without any intervention over standard internet connections, uh, very easy to implement, and no additional um, uh, software required. It all is included in the appliance. Uh, one of the nice benefits of that is that if the corporate HQ were to uh, lose internet connection for a while, the branch office is still up and running with the folders and files that they need, and the mobile users on the top left of this screen would be automatically redirected with no intervention or administrative uh, help, automatically get redirected to the folders and files they need at the branch office. So you've also built in geographical redundancy, some disaster recovery, and geographical distribution for safety uh, of, the, of your chosen data. Partners and clients, as represented on the top right, have access to the folders and files that they need, uh, whether or not they have a transporter. If they don't have a transporter, they can still get access uh, uh, to the folders and files that you invite them to. But if they do have a transporter, again, they get the benefit of accessing those folders and files at land rate speeds. And when they're finished with that project, you remove them from that shared folder and it remote wipes all the files that you've shared with them from any devices that may, they may have uh, had it on uh, with the uh, transporter software. This kind of zooms in a little bit on how the transporter works. Uh, the bigger square represents the firewall, and then of course you've got the transporter. 
uh, the transporter 75 or 150. Uh, the numbers indicate the number of users associated with that particular transporter. And then the gold arrow that goes up and down there between the NetApp filers as, uh, as representative of a, of a general NAS device um, indicates that that's our network storage connector. That's that bi-directional synchronization that you can establish between your traditional NAS and the transporter. You log into the transporter and uh, point the transporter to the folders that you want uh, to be synchronized with the, uh, with the NAS device. Uh, and then they're made available externally on the mobile devices. And those mobile users get access to those folders and files without cumbersome VPNs or logins and over standard internet connections. Makes it very easy to users, for users, gives them the Dropbox-like experience that they expect and they need, while at the same, same time maintaining the integrity and security and control that IT departments need. The logos on the bottom of this uh, uh, page here indicate that uh, we're using a standard SIS connection, uh, so uh, although we've got a, a net app there to, to, to show a standard share, uh, we're compatible with, uh, with, with any standard SIS share there of any, of any brand. So here's another look at how the branch office installation might look. So you've got HQ again off to the right with a couple of transporters there, again based on user count or capacity requirements. And then the branch office, uh, maybe you've got 50 or 60 users, put a transporter in that office and then they get access to all those folders and files at LAN rate speed. So they don't have to hit the internet every time they're making a change. Saves uh, uh, internet bandwidth uh, consumption. And then the blue arrow shows this uh, synchronization, active persistent synchronization with the transporters at HQ, who in turn uh, have that bi-directional synchronization with the standard share that's represented by the NetApp appliances on this, on this particular image. So you get a true edge to core or remote to core capability, ensuring that all the activity that takes place in the branch office is not only meeting their requirements from a performance standpoint, but is replicated right to the HQ and then put back into your regular audit and backup routines. So the edge to core, remote to core kind of a concept can be replicated in multiple branch offices. Uh, as I said before, you don't need a transporter at the branch office for, for your users to get access uh, to it, but it really does increase performance and, and creates the ability for uh, the uh, remote site replication of data that, uh, that often is required. Here's an example of how it might work with partners and clients. Again, you've got the same transporters uh, at HQ connected with the network storage connector to the standard share. And then you've invited as guest users, uh, our transporters uh, support uh, an unlimited number of guest users per, uh, uh, per appliance. Of course, you know, un unlimited is theoretical, uh, but we don't, we don't cap that. Um, and the partners and clients are invited to shares. Uh, guest users are not allowed to, to share those folders beyond uh, themselves. Uh, so you have control over where those folders and files are, are shared to and where they're located. And uh, once they're removed from that particular project, it will remote wipe the folders and the files from the devices that they were invited onto. This is an example of what the uh, user interface looks like. Uh, this happens to be a, a Mac computer, an Apple computer, Mac operating system. Uh, you can see there the transporter logo off to the left. You click on that and you get a standard representation of folders and files as you normally would in Finder on a Mac uh, operating system. You right mouse click on a folder and you get the transporter contextual menu so you can perform transporter actions such as sharing the folder or moving the file. Um, if you were to uh, click inside that folder, you could have undelete features on uh, particular files and an unlimited number of versions as well. So the, the interface is very familiar for end users. We have every public cloud benefit without the security risks of the public cloud because this, the, the appliance lives behind your firewall on the premises that you choose in a very secure environment and all uh, transfers are, uh, are done with the AES 256-bit encrypted uh, tunneling. Uh, we have uh, enterprise files that can share, 
provides access to files on laptops, mobile devices, and large capacities. I also like to point out the uh, third-party API uh, access that we provide. Uh, so we've got a public API that allows third parties or vertical integrations to uh, access the transporter directly. Uh, one example I like to point out is that an insurance adjuster may be out looking at damage at a car or a house, and uh, they have a tablet with a, with, a, with a form they have to fill out with the information of the customer, maybe some photos of what's been going on. And once they click submit, it can save directly to the transporter. And if between visits that tablet were lost, there'd be no confidential information on that, on that tablet, and all the information necessary from, from the visits has already been saved down to the transporter, uh, maybe already being worked on by the folks at HQ to process the claim. All you need to do is uh, uh, to reestablish that resource out in the field is reissue a tablet, install the transporter uh, app, and uh, all the data that they had previously comes back and they have access to it. So that's one example of the third party uh, or that public API for third party access. Let's talk a little bit about the technology. The graph on the left uh, shows you how the data uh, and sensitive information is transferred between authorized appliances or authorized devices, whether it be a transporter appliance or a mobile device. Uh, pay particular attention to the black arrows. Those solid black arrows show you the path of which the data transfers. None of the, tra none of the data transfers between our central service. Our central service communications are indicated by the gray dotted lines. Those gray dotted lines are there to show you that that's a message, messaging traffic. So here's how it works. You've got this transporter in the bottom left where the, the building there with the, with, with the green tree, and you can see the network storage connector arrow between the traditional NAS device and the transporter, that bidirectional synchronization with the folders, the chosen folders off that NAS device and that transporter. And a user there wants to take a, a folder and share it with one of the users with the mobile device off to the left. And so that user will uh, send a, an invite to the user on the mobile device, and that invite will go up in the form of an email to our uh, central service and then back down in the form of an email, email invite to the user with the mobile device. The user with the mobile device will accept that invite, which will trigger uh, a message from our central service down to the transporter and the mobile device telling them to set up an encrypted peer-to-peer -peer link between the two devices. Once that message is sent down, the uh, two devices, the two authorized devices, uh, create an encrypted tunnel between themselves, uh, and the encryption keys are held on the devices. We never see the encryption keys. We don't know what the encryption keys are. We never see the data. None of the data is transferred through our central service. So at that point in time, the devices are communicating uh, in a peer-to-peer -peer network, which allows you, if you kind of expand beyond the two users I just used in my example, it, it allows you to create a peer-to-peer -peer network mesh of a private cloud and creates great cross, uh, possibilities for you to have remote site replication, which is shown here between the two transporters at the bottom of this image. Uh, and even if you had some small work groups uh, at other locations indicated by this uh, home structure there on the top right. So everybody's getting access to folders and files at land rate speeds where they need to. Mobile device users are getting access to folders and files in a secure encrypted manner, uh, uh, viewing and pulling data directly off the transporter or synchronized if they, chose, if they choose to. So it's a little bit like Skype, where Skype creates this peer-to-peer -peer network between users and doesn't have to use this heavy footprint telco switching infrastructure. Uh, and that's, uh, we've, we've taken that concept and applied it to, to data. Here's a service comparison, if you will, a uh, simplified view that the traditional NAS devices that are on-premises uh, do a great job of high capacity, uh, high performance for, for, for local access or LAN. Um, you know, security because it's on premises, uh, but they fail when it comes to some of these new features that users are expecting with respect to the Dropbox user experience, right? Simplified access uh, remotely uh, to folders and files and uh, without a VPN uh, and uh, easy access to on mobile devices. So if you combine uh, kind of the best of both worlds, 
you get the connected data transport. You get on-premises uh, security. You get uh, higher capacities, uh, higher performance as you're accessing it at land rate speeds, uh, and all the benefits uh, of, of, of both uh, rolled into one. Here's the view of our product matrix. Starting off on the left, you see our transporter 150. Again, the number represents the number of uh, number of users. If you need 450 users, you simply add three transporters, which gives you uh, 450 users. So it's a scale out, scale up model where you add appliances in a grid-like fashion in order to increase capacity or user count. Uh, you can see that they are two U rack mount servers with SSD acceleration dual redundant hub swappable power supplies, and uh, also the uh, Transporter 150 and the Transporter 75 uh, as part of our inter enterprise product line uh, include the network storage connector. Off to the right is the Transporter 30 and the Transporter 15, which are intended for word groups to be used in conjunction with the Transporter 150 and 75. Uh, they can be used independently, but uh, ideally they're used uh, at remote sites uh, for smaller work groups that need access, local access to folders and files, uh, and used in conjunction with a transporter 150 or 75 at the corporate HQ. The transporter uh, is uh, very simple to install and get up and running, and we want to make it easy for everybody to get a hold of one and deploy it in your infrastructure so we have a risk-free trial program that allows you to uh, purchase a transporter uh, with the intention of keeping it and deploying it into your infrastructure. Uh, working quickly with our tech support team, they'll reach out to you upon purchase and schedule a time to do a walkthrough, which takes anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour to make sure that you've got it set up correctly and you're able to get up and running and, and get users on board and start sharing files. Uh, and make sure it's working properly for you, you've got it set up correctly, and it gives you 30 days to use the transporter. And if for some reason it's not working uh, to your needs, then uh, you can return it and uh, uh, with, with no financial obligation. So we make it easy for you to get a transporter, get it installed, and, and, and get it on site. And we know that you'll be really happy, happy with it. So I think, Samina, we've got some questions now, right? Yes, thank you, Russ, uh, for that information. So we're scrolling through the questions here. We have several questions that have been popping up throughout the webinar. Um, first question is on pricing. What are the prices for the appliances, and has there been a price change on the transporter 75 and 150 with the new connector feature? Oh, okay, great. Yeah, so there's no additional uh, price for the network storage connector. Uh, that's included in the transporter 150 and the transporter uh, 75. Like I said, it's not available on the 30 and the 15. Those are our work group products. But uh, it's included on the transporter 150 and the transporter 75. Uh, the transporter 150 for 150 users and uh, 24 terabytes data, uh, uh, the MSRP is uh, $18,999. And uh, there is a required support and maintenance agreement that uh, comes along with that, which is an additional 18%, so $22,300 for the uh, Transporter 150. The Transporter 75 is uh, $9,999 and also uh, uh, requires the 18% support, annual support and maintenance uh, contract, putting that at 11798 So if you take a look at those that pricing, and compare it with cloud services, you'll see that we're significantly below uh, the per user per month uh, fees from the cloud services service providers, and um, uh, you're able to gain an ROI in less than 12 months. So in a matter of months, you can you can uh, get a return on your investment versus uh, versus the public cloud uh, providers. Okay, great. How does the, the transfer to handle team or departmental shared folders? Oh, another great question. Uh, so uh, we have the concept of an organization. So your transporter organization would be, let's say, all the employees in your company. And uh, within that organization, you can establish groups. You can assign groups to finance, to sales, or to marketing. And within that group, you can invite them to certain folders that they need to work on and they need to collaborate on. So we have uh, capability to create uh, an overall organization. And within that organization, you break it down into groups. Great. You briefly went over this, but the question is, what happens when an employee leaves an organization, just transporter have remote visibility? 
Okay, yeah, good question. So the remote wipe capability is uh, is included with the transporter and no additional fee. It's all included in the software. So what happens is, um, let's say, uh, so in, in this in this example, the employee employee left the organization. So the IT administrator would remove them from the transporter organization. And at that time, at that moment, a uh, uh, a remote wipe signal is sent to all the devices that that particular user. Um, had been accessing the transporter with. And uh, once that remote wipe signal is sent, it, uh, it is irrevocable and will immediately start, uh, start, start wiping that device. Once the device is wiped, then the security token is, uh, is, uh, is deleted as well. The security token just stays there until the remote wipe uh, is initiated and completes and then the, the token is deleted and then they, have no longer, uh, they no longer have access to that data. Of course, uh, receiving the remote wipe si signal is dependent upon them being connected to the internet. So, uh, the first time they're connected to the internet, they get that remote wipe signal, and then and then it uh, takes care of all the data that was on the device. All right. We have a question on uh, admin rights. Do you need an admin computer in the organization to control everything and give mm -hmm. access to individuals? No, you don't. Uh, you, there's no additional hardware or software to buy. I actually get that question a lot when I talk about the uh, automated. Uh, 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 active persistent synchronization between transporter devices. Uh, we've essentially created the world's first file system with no central point of metadata or control. So you don't need an additional appliance to manage the synchronization between devices. You don't need any additional software. Uh, each transporter has the capability to do that, to do that uh, with another transporter in your organization. Um, so all you need to do is actually just create an email for an administrative user. Uh, that, that person would have a separate email if they want to be a user and access folders and files on the transporter. But all you really need is just an email to be used as the uh, transporter administrator and you have access to all those administrative functions and features. All right, great. Question on Active Directory, do we have integration? Uh, we have uh, Active Directory uh, Connector which imports your Active Directory information and uh, in the very near future, within a couple of weeks here, we'll have uh, Active Directory integration uh, using uh, some single sign-on partners. All right, great. We have a question on scalability. What if the customer requires more than 150 users? Can the product scale? And the follow-up to that is, what are the number of guest users for each device? Oh, okay, great. Uh, so the transporters are numbered uh, relative to the number of users uh, that that device can, uh, can hold. Uh, like a transporter 150, and if you need more than 150 users, you just add an additional transporter, and it will increment. So two transporter 150s is 300 users. Uh, if you have uh, 90 users, that would be two of the transporter 75s. So you just add transporters, and and they will in a uh, in order to increment the user count or the capacity requirements. Okay, thank you. We're going to take a couple more questions here. Um, question. Uh, some Dropbox users keep their entire documents on the folder. Um, is there a way that you can have my documents on transport? Oh, the my doc. Yeah, actually, we have a great feature that we call special folders. Uh, so, it, when you download the transporter desktop software, it, in preferences, there's an item called special folders, and it lists all the folders that operating systems normally create upon install, like my documents, my desktop, photos, videos, and uh, you can just check on which folders that you want to be synchronized with the transporter. Uh, most users live in uh, some combination of my documents or my desktop. Uh, I know I do. My desktop is kind of messy because that's all, where all the work is that I'm doing. Uh, and then I, uh, the default save location is in my documents uh, for, for other items. Um, so those, uh, my documents and, and my desktop are, are synchronized all the time with my transporter. And what that does is it allows me to get access to the My Documents folder or my desktop folder from wherever I am, on my iPad, on my iPhone, uh, on, my, on my laptop, uh, whatever device I might be traveling with, I get access to those folders and files. And I don't have to remember to save them to some special place online or, or, or elsewhere to make sure that I get access to that particular file uh, when I'm traveling. Uh, so it does replicate uh, My Documents and, and uh, My Desktop onto the transporter. Uh, and the, the, which makes it really great for uh, users. Uh, but the other real great benefit to that is uh, a lot of times users aren't very good at backing up their data. So if they were to lose their 
their laptop. They always call the IT department and say, hey, was I backed up? And, and uh, sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't if they had forgotten to copy everything down to another folder. Um, so with the transporter, uh, if they've chosen a selected sync and those folders have been synchronized to the transporter, all you need to do is issue them a new laptop, install the transporter software, they log in, and all the folders and files that they had previously on their desktop and uh, my documents uh, are made available to them again. So nothing's been lost. Great question. All right, so we're going to take one last question before we wrap things up. Uh, we have a user, uh, an attendee, who works for a nonprofit and wants to know if we have a payment plan. Oh, yeah, we can, we can definitely do that. We have uh, programs with schools and with nonprofits, and uh, we want to make it as easy as possible for customers to start using the transporter and, and enjoy the, the benefits of uh, mobile device access uh, to, to folders and files uh, in a secure and private manner. Uh, and so we can make accommodations with payment plans or some financing options, uh, uh, whatever you might need. All right, great. So if you have any additional questions, please contact us at sales at connectedgator.com and we'll have a sales rep follow up with you. So now we're going to be announcing our 10 winners for our Amazon gift cards. And the winners are Ray Barth, Josh Newman, James Clooney, William Gallagher, Yannick Lepernine, Mark Weiss, Stacey Kaiser, Eric Sanchez, Drew Ballard, and Gary Delphine. So please contact us at sales at connecteddata.com and we'll get those cards out to you. Hey, congratulations everybody. Thanks for participating. But just one other thing I'd like to mention, which is um, uh, I encourage you to reach out uh, to uh, some of our experts for what we call a live look, which is an opportunity to do a screen share, uh, to see exactly how the transporter works. We can uh, change uh, we can switch over and give you control so that you can actually uh, use the transporter yourself online, live with one of our experts explaining how it all works. Uh, you can go to our website and click on the uh, request a live look button and uh, somebody will reach out to you and find the right time to get on your calendar and make sure that you have an opportunity to learn more about the transporter. Uh, it's pretty exciting technology. It's a great product uh, and uh, we know it will meet your needs. Thanks everybody.